so this is about the charm now let us see about barbiturates <clears throat> Now, in case of barbiturates, barbiturates are classified according to their duration of action. Now, barbiturate, long duration of action, barbiturates, intermediate duration of action, and then short-acting or ultra-short-acting barbiturates. It all depends upon their duration of action. Now, long-acting one is phenobarbitone. Phenobarbitone. Whereas intermediate acting one, pentobarbitone and butabarbitone. Short acting or ultra short acting, thiobarbitone and methohexitone. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let me repeat this. Uh, since there is a problem there. So, flumazanil. Flumazanil is an antagonist at this benzodiazepine cycle. Benzodiazepine goes, binds there, and shows some activity, whereas flumazanil goes, binds to the receptor, but it blocks the receptor. What is an antagonist? It has two properties. It, it has affinity. It goes and binds to the receptor, but no further intrinsic activity is there. So, literally, it is acting as blocking that particular receptor. So when flumazenil is there, the receptor is blocked, benzodiazepine cannot bind there. To the same receptor, beta carbolins also bind, so that is also inhibited. So this is what happens with flumazenil. Flumazenil is an antidote for benzodiazepine for poisoning. If someone takes too much of benzodiazepine, flumazenil is administered, it blocks the receptor, so benzodiazepine cannot show it much. Clear? Now, coming to barbiturates. Now, barbiturates are classified according to their duration of Long acting, intermediate acting, short acting. Long acting bar barbiturates are phenobarbitone, intermediate pento, butobarbitone, short acting thiobarbitone, and methohexitone. So, this, these are all the drugs which we see in barbiturates. But barbiturates are not widely used as preferred drugs because they have some serious adverse effects of them. One of the major ones is their therapeutic index is very low. Therapeutic index is very low. When you see the dose response curve, they have a steep curve is there. Understand this one. <clears throat> Imagine this one is dose and this one is activity. So the curve of, of these things will be like this. Look at this. By increasing dose, the activity is increased. Look at this. With small increase, what is happening? With severe increase of activity is there. That is called a steep dose response curve. And Drugs with this kind of curve have very low therapeutic index. Low therapeutic index means you increase a little amount of drug, that becomes lethal. So that is what is low therapeutic index. So barbiturates are not widely preferred because of this. Not only this. Second one, all the barbiturates can cause enzyme induction. Enzyme induction. Now understand this word. See, enzyme induction, all the drugs will be most of the drugs will get metabolized in liver with the help of cytochrome P450 family. So these barbiturates can cause induction of that enzyme. That means the enzyme activity is increased. The next example is phenobarbitone. Phenobarbitone, when people take phenobarbitone, the enzyme activity is increased. When enzyme activity is increased, what happens? Metabolism enhances. When metabolism enhances, what happens to half-life? Half-life reduces. So this is the problem with barbiturates. Now, another one, all the barbiturate has got habit forming problem or they cause addiction. So when people continue to take these barbiturates, they cause a craving for the drug, craving for the medicine. That is what is called as addiction. The other problem is because it has got low therapeutic index, when there is a toxicity, no specific antidote is there. No specific antidote is there. So this is a cause of concern. By chance, if someone has taken higher dose, that will cause this toxicity and no specific antidote is there. So it has got four disadvantages. One, low therapeutic index. Enzyme, they cause enzyme induction. They have habit-forming property, addiction, and then no specific antidote is there. Because of all these things, barbiturates are not widely used. You will read about barbiturates only in two classes. One, to treat epilepsy. Two, to, to cause 
cerebral hypnosis. These drugs, the short acting one, can also be used as general anesthetics. We'll see later, but the use is very much reduced because of all these side effects. Whereas barbiturates, uh, benzodiazepines are very useful class. Benzodiazepines has got many pharmacological activities as well. <clears throat> Now, benzodiazepines can be used to treat epilepsy. They can be used to cause sedative hypnosis. They can be used to treat anxiety. They can also be used to cause general anesthesia. Finally, they can also be used as central skeletal muscle relaxant. Five therapeutic uses are there. Let me repeat this again. Now you need to understand this thing. Benzodiazepines will cause inhibitory neurotransmission. So wherever it is required, it will be used. Sedative hypnosis inhibition is required. General anesthesia inhibition is required. To treat epilepsy, inhibition is required. Skeletal, central skeletal muscle relaxation. Skeletal muscles will get relaxed because of using this one. Anxiety. You know, we have seen about anxiety. Anxiety. Anti-anxiety is minor tranquilizer. They will tranquil the mind by causing CNS depression. So for all of them, benzodiazepines are used. You know, you know, many drugs are there in, in this case, like diazepam, <clears throat> lorazepam. oxazepam uh, temazepam lot of drugs are there alprazolam now all of them can be used to treat various conditions they are used to cause sedative hypnosis to treat anxiety to treat epilepsy to cause general anesthesia and to cause central skeletal muscle relaxation Now, out of them, this lorazepam, oxazepam, temazepam has got very short duration of action. The reason is these drugs, when they get into the liver, in liver, in metabolic pathway, we have two groups are there: phase one reactions, phase two reactions. These drugs will not be affected with phase one reactions; they will directly get into phase two, that is, conjugation reaction. So the drugs will immediately get conjugated. So short duration of action is there. So no hangover effect will be. Let me explain what is hangover is. See, if someone is using barbiturate long duration action drug, so the long duration will goes from 12 to 16 hours. If someone is taking these drugs to get sleep, they take in the night, they'll sleep in the morning also. That is hangover. Whereas these drugs, because of the short duration of action, like lorazepam, oxazepam, temazepam, they don't have this action. The other things, see, what all the disadvantages are there? They will become advantages. Barbiturates has got very good, very high therapeutic index. When you see the curve of barbiturates, the curve will be like this. See the curve. By increasing the dose, a slow increase of activity is there. Whereas this one, a steep rise is there. This one is is with barbiturates. This one is for benzodiazepines. So very very high therapeutic index. So toxicity is very much reduced. And do, they do not cause enzyme induction, and they do not cause addiction. And you have a specific antidote is there. The specific antidote is flumazenil. Just now we have seen flumazenil is a specific antagonist of this receptor. So when the drug is given, benzodiazepine could not bind, and the action is blocked. So this is what is advantage with benzodiazepines. <coughs> so to use as a steroid hypnotic, mostly benzodiazepines are used. Very popular known sleeping pills are these ones. You know, alprazolam. Our diazepam is composed. Alprazolam is restive. The brand name. These two are very popular. So this is a major class. Along with this, you have one more class is there. They are known as Z class or Z class because all of them starts with the alphabet Z. So they are Zolpidem, Zelplan, and Zopiclon. So all of them are starting with Z. These are also acting on this benzodiazepine receptor and enhances chloride conduction. But because of the shorter duration of action, they are considered as sleep inducers. Understand this one? See, when we get into the sleep, people may have two different kinds of problem. Some of them will not get sleep at all. The induction is problem. Once they get the sleep, they will happily sleep. That is induction problem. The other one, certain people get into sleep, but the sleep will be always disturbed. So for them, sleep maintenance is required. 
Now these drugs are very good sleep inducers because of the sharp duration of action. When people take it, they immediately get them into the sleep. So Z class drug sleep inducers again. They will enhance chloride conduction, causes this. Now leaving these classes, some other drugs are there like glutathione, chloraldehyde, carisoprodol. All kind of drugs. They are all older. Sedative hypnotics, which are not widely used now because of their multiple side effects. The best group is benzodiazepines for sleep induction. Z class drugs are there. Barbiturates, they have multiple problems are there, hence they are not being used. So when you see about sedative hypnotics, the job is sedation means calming down the mind. Hypnosis means put them in sleep. So again, the difference is only quantitative difference. You increase a little bit of dose, sedative will become hypnotic drug. Now the entire concept revolves around GABA receptor, GABA A receptor, which is an ion channel receptor. It causes chloride conduction. When GABA binds to the receptor, chloride conduction is increased and it results in inhibitory neurotransmission, CNS depression, puts them in sleep. The agents are barbiturates, benzodiazepines, Z class of drugs. These are the major class. Now barbiturates has got multiple side effects on them. They they have low therapeutic index. They cause enzyme induction. They cause addiction properties. And there is no specific antidote is there, and all these are countered in benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines they have very high therapeutic index. There is a specific antidote is there called flumazine. Now the other class, zolpidem, 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 all of them are very good sleep inducers. They are also causing GABA, enhanced GABA neurotransmission. Finally, glutathione, uh, uh, chloraldehyde. Uh, peraldehyde, all of them are they are in fact outdated drugs because of the higher side effects. No one is using the drugs. So this is about sedative and hypnotics. Now the other related one is general anesthetics. Let us see.